Welcome to the Kindle Report, where I share my 41 years of experience to help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Remember to subscribe, like, and share these videos. Well, folks, in tonight's video, I'm going to address something that I think is very interesting. As always, I tell you folks that I am data driven and I am. And the result of tonight's run on our models was very interesting. One of the things I was looking for after a big rally like we saw yesterday with the S&P up 1.4%, NASDAQ up 0.8%, and Russell up 2.2%, I wanted to see how many buy orders we would get or otherwise was it able to flip the script in one day. And there's an old saying that Ralph Elliott used to talk about as one day doesn't make a market. And definitely what happened yesterday did not make a market. It will take several more days of stability or potentially moving higher for this market to start to get traction again. What I saw in tonight's run on our database was very revealing. In fact, not only did we not flip the script or buy back a bunch of the any of the 7,000 symbols that we've sold in the last three sessions, but we actually got more selling. There were 578 sell signals versus 191 buy signals. The database is down tick to 32% now from 36. I'll go through more details here in a few minutes, but this is very revealing to me. And we did not get any traction. It looked like a great day. I know I should have been impressed by the numbers that we saw in the indices, but everything was highly concentrated in the stocks and buying of the indices to drive the markets higher. It was not a broad based rally at all from my viewpoint and our database, which is going to pick up any type of short term trends. And typically after we get a sell off like we have had, it takes a while to get stability in the markets, get the patterns to set up again so that we can start to see buy signals come back in on a short term basis. As I mentioned, I'll go through more details in that database as we go forward. We also saw the 10 year Treasury turn up. It finished up at 1.49%. And it looks like it's going to move back toward 155, possibly 1.62. I'm not going to cover the 10 year until the live stream on Wednesday. But it looks to me that we're getting very close to setting up the next move to the upside. And interest rates are likely to move toward the 182 to 190% level. And I think this is going to happen fairly quick when it starts to move and the markets are not going to like this. But as I mentioned in yesterday's video, we the big numbers this week, I think, are going to be on Friday when we see the PCE numbers and the inflation numbers and also the GDP numbers on Thursday where we're looking at the deflator. We could get this inflation story to come back into play very quickly. I don't think it's went away. And all the news stories that you read yesterday told you how the market shrugged it off. I saw a story on how the markets got it wrong. All kinds of stories out there. What that tells you is that the consensus is that everything's going to be OK. We're just going to keep going. The Fed is going to keep printing. And I did cover in last night's video where I discussed that I thought that the Fed's balance sheet could increase to 12 trillion or more. And that's very likely to happen. But on a short term basis, we're seeing this rotation come in. We're not getting any major rotation happening in our intermediate database. We're definitely seeing more selling, more liquidation in the short term database. And we go to today, we're going to get housing starts. As I mentioned in last night's video, I think all of the housing numbers are going to miss. I do expect this report to have some material effect with market sentiment if they miss in a big way. I don't expect to see any surprises on the upside. This is not likely in the current environment. Let's go ahead and take a look at the charts, see how they're set up for Tuesday's opening. As I review the WaveTech database, we did see, as I mentioned earlier, 578 sales signals, 191 buy signals. It has moved the percent bullish now to 32.64%. So we continue to see a decline. Typically, we'll decline toward the 28 to 22% level. Full liquidation would mean we would go to 18%. 
Now, when I talk about a full liquidation, typically that does signify that the markets will be in a pullback mode. It does not mean that we're going to see a complete collapse in the markets, but it does tell you that there's an interim correction possible at this time. And as I mentioned a minute ago, it's going to take several days of stability to get these charts to come back into play. Many of these charts were absolutely destroyed technically in the last week and a half of trading. That's why we've seen this continued deterioration of the database from a bullish standpoint. We were at 64%, now we're down to 32 So we're definitely seeing this liquidation continue. As I review the S&P futures, we have seen volatility reemerge, and we're starting to see the market grid expand back out. And yesterday we had just about a hundred point range overnight on the futures. We printed down to 41.26 low and then a high of 42.19. We're seeing some follow through tonight. We've been up to 42.26, so that satisfies that satisfies well over the hundred point handle rally. But as we're looking at the patterns here, we're not seeing any acceleration in the PPMs. PPM1 is at a 0 0.01, which is flat. We're trading right at the 10 peri moving average right now. 42.17 is the 10 peri moving average. Last trade here, 42.21 up 7.25 handles overnight. There, We're not seeing the acceleration. The range suggests that we could move up to an R1 today, 42.30, which would be a slightly higher high from yesterday. Expectation is for an R1 S1 with the possibility of expanding to an S2. With the increased volatility, it's possible in days like this, especially after the big range, that we could see an R2 S2. That would suggest an extreme range, 41.78 to 42.49. I don't see us getting to that 42.49 today, but but that is in the realms of expectations based on volatility. As we look at the SPX, I mentioned in yesterday's commentary, we did have an STX buy signal, which suggested we would climb, we would climb back into the range. I thought we would see 41.87, something like that, possibility of 4,200. Of course, we saw the market move much higher than that as we saw a move up to the 4226 level and that was above the RTX number. In fact, we went from an STX buy to an RTX sell signal for today and that suggests as we look at the market grid for today that we're likely to see an S1, S2 be 4214, 4203 on the downside most likely we'll see the R1 S2 level, just like I mentioned in the futures, with the possibility of a spike in volatility, R2 S2. And I do expect to see this market close flat to slightly lower based on the RTX sell signal. As I review the NASDAQ, we are up five handles overnight, very quiet markets, volumes very low, 22,000 contracts overnight. When we look at the market grid for today, the expectations are for an S1, R1, 41, R1, 14,188, the high so far, 14,154, low 14,123 overnight, expectation for a 14,071. But I do see the potential for a spike in volatility with an S2, R2 as well. I think today will be somewhat of a quieter session we've seen yesterday, and we should see some backtracing. We did not get an RTXL signal on the NASDAQ. In fact, it's trading just above that demand line, the 10-day moving average, 14,030, and we continue to be above that. We, in fact, in fact, we have not been below the 10-day moving average since June the 3rd, and we've continued to remain above that. PPMs are in trend mode on PPM1. PPM2 and 3 are somewhat neutral. 
there is some vulnerability to the downside. If we were to get through that 10 period moving average at 14.030, right now there is only a 40% probability to get through that level. The final market I'll cover tonight is gold. Gold is up 50 cents on the session, 1783. I mentioned that we got the STX buy signal. We should be sideways for a couple days. We are seeing the PPMs remain in a downtrend mode. PPM 1 is at a minus 0.60, PPM 2 minus 0.26. Both of those are in downtrend modes, suggesting that when the 10 period moving average gets a bit closer to the action, which will be around 1825 to 1815, will be major resistance and we could see a retest of the lows that we printed at the 1761 level. I've mentioned a couple times in the coverage of gold in the last several days is that 1776 continues to be a major line that comes off of the monthly charts. I do expect to see us hover a little bit above and below that line for the next couple of weeks. And we should see some stability continue in this market and start to bleed off some of this downward pressure over the next several sessions. It will be critical that we hold that low though at the 1761 level. This will complete the video for tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Hi, my name is Bob Kendall. You know me from the Kendall Report. I help you manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. The way that I do that is through our software platform, Portfolio Expert. This platform is amazing. It covers over 16,400 symbols. You can build as many portfolios as you want to manage and to protect your wealth. What you'll find by setting up a trial of our software is that we're going to train and walk you through every step to become what we refer to as an ETF hacker. We're going to show you how to take your favorite ETF and make it something really special and it's owned by you. We also call this building your own personal funds. And what that means is you're going to build your own personal mutual fund. It is all yours. You can pick the stocks and the software will walk you from A to Z, telling you when to buy and sell, how much to buy and sell, including helping you to protect your capital through the signals that when the market rolls over, it will get you to cash and out of harm's way. It's very simple from here. It's just sign up, click the link down below. We'll get you in our system. As soon as you get in there, we will notify you of a live webinar to walk you through every step so you understand exactly how to use this product and how to manage your portfolios and protect your wealth. Sign up now, just click the link below.